in the United States, from slavery well into the 20th century, doctors used African Americans as a supply chain for experimentation, as subjects deprived of either consent or anesthesia. Scientists injected plutonium into them, purposely let diseases like syphilis go untreated to observe the effects, perfected the typhoid vaccine on their bodies, and subjected them to whatever agonizing experiments came to the doctors' minds. These amounted to unchecked assaults on human beings. One plantation doctor, according to the medical ethicist Harriet A. Washington in her groundbreaking book Medical Apartheid, made incisions into a black baby's head to test a theory for curing seizures. The doctor opened the baby's skull with cobbler's tools, puncturing the scalp, as he would later report, with the point of a crooked awl. That doctor, James Marion Sims, would later be heralded as the founding father of gynecology. He came to his discoveries by acquiring enslaved women in Alabama and conducting savage surgeries that often ended in disfigurement or death. He refused to administer anesthesia, saying vaginal surgery on them was not painful enough to justify the trouble. Instead, he administered morphine only after surgery, noting that it relieves the scalding of the urine and, as Washington writes, weakened the will to resist repeated procedures. A Louisiana surgeon perfected the cesarean section by experimenting on the enslaved women he had access to in the 1830s. Others later learned how to remove ovaries and bladder stones. They performed these slave cabin experiments in search of breakthroughs for their white patients who would one day undergo surgery in hospitals and under the available anesthesia. Their total control over black bodies gave them unfettered access to the anatomy of live subjects that would otherwise be closed to them. Sims, for example, would force a woman to disrobe and get on her knees on a table. He would then allow other doctors to take turns with the speculum to force her open and invite leading men in town and apprentices in to see for themselves. He later wrote, I saw everything as no man had seen before. We would all like to believe that we would resist the impulse to inflict such horror on fellow members of our own species, and some of us very likely would, but not as many as we might like to believe. In a famous, though controversial, 1963 study of people's threshold for violence when ordered to inflict it, College students were told to administer electric shocks to a person in an adjoining room. The people receiving the shocks were unharmed, but yelled out and banged on the walls as the intensity of the shocks increased. The conductor of the study, the psychologist Stanley Milgram, found that a majority of participants, two out of three, could be induced to deliver the maximal voltage to an innocent suffering subject wrote the scholar David Livingstone Smith, who specializes in the study of dehumanization. In a similar experiment conducted at Stanford University in 1975, the participants did not have to be ordered to deliver the shocks. They needed only to overhear a single negative comment about the students facing potential punishment. The participants were led to believe that students from another college were arriving for a joint project. Some participants overheard the experimenters, presumably by accident, make neutral or humanizing comments about the visiting students that they seemed nice. Other participants heard dehumanizing comments that they seemed like animals. Participants gave the dehumanized people twice the punishment of the humanized ones, and significantly more than those they knew absolutely nothing about. The participants were willing to go to maximum intensity 
on the dehumanized group. Dehumanization is a joint creation of biology, culture, and the architecture of the human mind, Smith wrote. The human story is filled with pain and tragedy, but among the horrors that we have perpetrated on one another, the persecution and attempted extermination of the Jewish people, the brutal enslavement of Africans, and the destruction of Native American civilizations, in many respects, are unparalleled.